Now, sadly, a lot of us have been lied to. And we've been told by certain people and certain things that they would love us back if we did certain things. In fact, some of you are really angry right now, and your anger is turning to bitterness because you were told by the corporation, if you achieve certain things, if you make us so much money, boy, this corporation will always love you. And now you're finding out that a corporation is incapable of loving you. And now you're sitting here wondering, what did I give my life for? What did I do with my life if I was trying to win the love of something that can't love me back? Uh, Some of you are frustrated because you tried to make your spouse Jesus to you. Uh, you, you, You put them on a pedestal. You said, if I can get them to love me, then my life will be whole. And now you're really mad at them. Because while they brought a lot of good things to your life, they can't save you. Some of us did it with children. Right? Okay, my life was so messed up, but I'm not going to let my children's lives be messed up. And so we had a child, and, and, and we wanted that child to be perfect, and we loved that child, and this child will grow up and love me back. Little, and then only too late did we find out that kids are born with their own agenda. Uh, they're born busy. And now you're mad at your child because the child didn't save you. And now you're here, you show up on Valentine's, which, which let's be honest, is the worst holiday of the year. Okay? You don't ever know what to do on, on, on Valentine's Day. Okay? Uh, if you're single, do you, buy, do you buy yourself a Valentine's Day? Okay? All right, or if there's somebody in a relationship, then okay, how, where are you in a relationship? Okay, if you buy too big a Valentine's present, then you've messed up. If you buy too small a Valentine's present, then you've messed up. But there's no gauge anywhere, there's no chart anywhere that says, hey, been dating one month, here are the appropriate gifts. Been dating too much, here are the appropriate gifts. Been married a year, here's the appropriate gifts. Nobody does that. The way you find out is you have it thrown back in your face. And then you say, that was the wrong gift. <laughs> right? Or you did a great job last year at Valentine's. You put the plan together. You pulled it off. It was wonderful. Now you got pressure this year. Because what happens if you don't do it as well as you did last year? Did you lose love for your spouse? Do you? See, it's terrible. And the reason it's terrible is we don't get this word. A lot of us have mystified this word as lust. A lot of us have mystified it as desire. A lot of us have mystified it as possession. And so when somebody tells us they love us, we're really not sure what they've said. We're really not sure how we are to respond. And the reason is most of us don't feel, no, change that, most of us know we are not lovable. And we all have this fear, don't we, that we're going to have Be Honest Sunday and you're going to have to stand up and tell the truth about yourself. And if everybody knows the truth about you, nobody in this room will love you. And so when you come to church and you hear the pastor say, you need to love the people around you, you need to love the broken world, you're going, I can't find anybody to love me. Or maybe that's where we need to stop. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to talk about this just a minute. You see, you're not the only person that's had this issue. You're not the only person that's asked this question. Uh, in fact, Matthew tells us a story of a conversation between somebody very much like us and Jesus. It's in Matthew 22. Start somewhere around verse 34. A lawyer comes up and asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? 
Now, I don't know who this guy is, but he's a friend of mine. Because he'd be, he'd be with me on the back of the class, uh, having not studied all semester, now wanting to find out what's on the final. Okay, that's what this guy's asking. Can you tell me what's on the final? If I have to get one question right, which one do I really need to get right? And Jesus gives him the answer. You remember the answer, don't you? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all of your mind. The second is just like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now here's what's interesting about that passage. Do you know what word Jesus uses? Agape. Here's the great commandment. Agape God. Agape your neighbor. Agape yourself. Now, as we've talked about before, when we've, when we've talked about that, this passage in, Ma in, in Matthew 22, what Jesus did was set up a triangle, and you literally cannot do one without doing the other. Okay? Some of you made a New Year's resolution. I'm going to be nicer to people. Gave up on that one, what, 2nd, 3rd of January? Some of you have said, I'm only, I'm going to love God. I'm going to forget about the world, forget about the people around me. I'm going to focus on God. That's all I'm going to do. Only to find out that God brings you to a lot of different people who need to be loved. It happens when you understand how much Jesus loves you. And most of us don't. I tell you the story often uh, about my love for um, the antique road show, right? And it's, it's always hilarious when the expert begins to hyperventilate because he's holding something really expensive. And he'll say, hey, so this is where the artist signed this piece and it's what makes it so valuable. And I tell you, I wish there was a way I could go out in the congregation and grab you and turn you upside down and say, see, this is where the artist signed you. You are an, uh, a bearer of the image of God, a bearer of the Imago Dei. Uh, you are an artwork of God Himself, and I can't tell you how much you're worth. I can only tell you this, that on the day that the world demanded your ransom, Jesus Christ paid it with His own life. That's how much you're worth. 